Hi, welcome to another MedCram lecture. We're going to talk about measles. There's been an outbreak of measles recently, so I wanted to talk about the clinical syndromes that measles can cause, the stages of infection, the diagnosis, and the treatment. And I think there's some high yield things that any healthcare provider should know. First thing you should know is that it's a virus, okay? Specifically, it's the rubiola virus. Rubiola. Now, you may remember the MMR vaccine. This is measles, mumps, rubella. Rubella is German measles. It's a more milder type of disease. This is the first M, the measles, mumps, rubella. Okay, And it's the rubiola virus. It's very infectious. In fact, the estimate is, is that if somebody has the virus during its transmissible phase, they can infect up to 12 to 18 people. So it's very infectious as we've seen in the news, and it can spread very rapidly. Now, just to be complete, there are six different clinical syndromes that the rubiola or the measles virus can cause. Of course, the first one is the classic type of uh, measles, otherwise known as classic measles. We're going to talk about that one more. That's the you know your three C's, which we'll get into, the coplic spots, which you've heard about. We'll talk about that one. Next one is called modified measles. Modified measles is where someone who has been immunized in the past, but maybe don't have a good antibody response, may get a sort of a lower level classic measles. It's called modified measles. Usually the onset is longer and the course is not as severe as would be with classic measles. So yeah, it's possible that you could be immunized against measles and still get a measles type of syndrome, but it's a little bit less. Third one is called atypical measles. We don't see it much anymore because it has to do with people who got the dead virus vaccine. Now, most measles, mumps, rubella, in fact, all of them are a live virus. This is why we don't give it to people who are immunocompromised. But the dead virus, which was given back in the, uh, the mid-60s, would not give the proper immune response. And so it was possible for these people who were immunized with the dead virus could get this atypical measles, just something you should know about. A couple of other things or three other things that you can get is a post-infectious neurological symptoms. So post-infectious. neurological. Okay, these are some of the things that you might hear about called ADEM. That's acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. And the other thing you may have heard about is SSPE, which is a subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. These are not good. These are complications. We'll talk about those briefly. The other one you can get is severe measles. I'm not going to talk much about that. And then other complications, such as things called giant cell pneumonia. PNA is my abbreviation for pneumonia. And then you could even get something called a measles inclusion body encephalitis. So these things here, basically four, five, six, these are complications which we'll talk about briefly later. But the one that I want to focus in on is the most common, and that's the classic measles. How are you going to be able to identify that in patients that you see in the clinic, in the emergency room, etc.? So let's talk about that. There are four stages of the infection of the measles virus, and I've got them abbreviated here, I, P, E and R. I stands for the incubation period. P stands for the prodrome. E stands for the exanthem. And R stands for recovery and immunity. So in the first phase called the incubation period, so incubation, the patient is usually asymptomatic. 
They don't feel any symptoms. Very rarely would they feel symptoms. And the key here is that that can last from eight to 10 days. Okay, so they're walking around for eight to 10 days and they don't even know that they've been infected. Now, the prodrome is an interesting period. It's here where you see the three C's, prodrome. What's the first thing that comes on is constitutional symptoms, such as fever and malaise and anorexia. This doesn't mean that they're skinny, it just means that they don't want to eat. But the other thing that you see here that's very characteristic is something called the three C's. And what are those three C's? You ought to know what those three C's are. The three C's are cough, conjunctivitis. That means that the area around the eye is inflamed and it is red. And the last C is coryza. Basically, another name for coryza is rhinitis or inflamed nasal mucosa. So runny nose, eyes that are kind of red, and cough. So these are kind of nonspecific. But if you see those three together with fevers, especially when you're thinking about an outbreak, you want to think about that. Okay. The next thing you want to think about, too, is something that's very classic that they'll test you on in this prodrome phase, and those are coplic spots. Now, what are coplic spots? Some people have described this as grains of salt on a red background. If you were to look in someone's mouth, imagine the mouth is very inflamed and it looks red back there. And you can imagine either whitish, grayish, or bluish. So if I were to pick a color like that, you would see these whitish, grayish, or bluish spots right where the molars are on the buccal mucosa. They could also see it in, uh, in other mucosal areas, genital specifically, but this is typically where you see these coplic spots. Now, the interesting thing about coplic spots is that they usually show up 48 hours before the next stage which is the rash or the exanthem stage, okay? This is, coplic spots are known as an N anthem. The rash is known as the exanthem. So if you see coplic spots, the rash is probably gonna be coming in within the next 48 hours. By the way, the incubation period we said lasts about eight to 10 days. The prodrome period usually lasts between two and eight days, but mostly it lasts about two days. So if it's lasting about two days and coplic spots usually pop up 48 hours before the next stage, usually the prodrome comes on with fevers, malaise, anorexia, cough, conjunctivitis, coryza, and coplic spots. The thing you ought to know about coplic spots is there's nothing else that causes them. If you see coplic spots, it's what we call pathognomonic for measles. Okay, now let's talk about the rash. The rash is a maculopapular rash. Okay, and it starts on the head and moves down. It usually spares the palms and the soles, which is important to, to understand. Now, the other thing about this is that after the rash, so if the rash starts usually about two to three days after the rash, there will be a fever or a high fever, which will then defervesce. And in fact, after the rash appears, usually clinical improvement occurs about 48 hours after the rash appears. So again, another 48 hours. So let's review that 48 hours. We have two 48 hour marks. Bef 48 hours before the rash appears is when we'll see the coplic spots. And 48 hours after the rash appears, we'll see fevers, but then they will start to go down. If we don't see resolution of symptoms after 48 hours of the rash, these people are at increased risk for getting complications.
The other thing you should know is when the rash appears is usually when the complex spots disappear. Finally, let's talk about recovery. Usually this could last a couple of weeks. But eventually the patient is going to get better. The cough may persist for one or two weeks after the uh, infection. But again, if you start to see fevers beyond three, four, five days after the rash, usually that may be leading toward a complication. So fever, 48 hours plus post rash equals questionable complications occurring. Let's review the key portions here. There are four stages. The incubation period lasts for more than a week. When the prodrome comes, there's fever, malaise, anorexia, the three C's, complex spots appearing 48 hours before the rash, and then when the rash comes, the complex spots go away. They'll have fevers continuing, but after two to three days of the rash, the rash will then start to coalesce and then basically slough off. And then if fevers continue after 48 hours after the rash, that's usually not a good sign. Finally, the recovery phase is about two weeks. Great. In the next video, we're going to talk about the diagnosis and the treatment of measles.